Well, I want you to look at the faces of these women. Hundreds and hundreds of them filling the screen behind me. What do they all have in common? Well, they are young, all between the ages of 18 and 25. They are daughters, sisters, mothers, and friends. All of them are cold cases of missing women in the United States. This woman is Kaylita White. She was 18 years old when she went missing on August 22, 2006 from Tukwila, Washington. And this is 24-year-old Jennifer Kissy. Her family has been looking for her since January 24, 2006, when she went missing from Orlando, Florida. And this is 20-year-old Lori Deppis. Lori's boyfriend, Mark, says that 26 years ago, on August 19, 1992, Lori vanished without a trace. Lori and I met when we were about 15, 16 years old and started dating four years later. Lori and I talked about marriage. She was the love of my life. But Lori has been missing for 26 years. She was just gone. It was like out of nowhere on Sunday, August 19th, 1992. Lori called me from the mall at her job and said that she'd be coming over. Around 9.40ish, I heard her car pull up because she had an extremely loud muffler. They heard her car arrive. She had a VW Rabbit that had a distinct muffler issue. Nobody actually saw her. After I heard Lori drive in, uh, I waited maybe 30 seconds or so. I walked out onto my deck, and roughly where this silver car is here was her car. She had a cup sitting right about here, and nothing else looked disturbed. The one big clue was a drink container left on the car's hood. However, that drink never provided investigators with any type of a link. I called the police probably Literally within 10, 15 minutes, we were just walking all over the neighborhood, looking for her, calling her name, walking into apartment buildings, just looking for hours. I remember seeing one of the police officers open up one of the garbage cans specifically, and that's when it just really kind of threw me off, like, wait a minute, they're looking for her body. Mark says his life changed forever that night. When the news of Lori's disappearance hit their small town, Mark says his community turned against him and started pointing fingers. It has been 26 years and Mark has never spoken out, never given a single interview until now. When Lori disappeared, I knew that I would be one of the prime suspects. The FBI was following me around for probably a good seven, eight months. People in restaurants saying, hey, that's the guy that killed his girlfriend. I would get prank phone calls in the middle of the night saying, honey, it's me, I'm alive, I'm okay. I'm talking three, four o'clock in the morning, so I would get excited and think that she's okay. And then it would be a female laughing and then eventually hanging up. One day I came home from work and there were probably eight or nine missing flyers plastered to my door with, I raped her, I tortured her, all kinds of really vulgar things. Then, a week or so after she had gone missing, Mary, her mother, happened to be there. And in front of a room full of people, she stuck her finger in my face and said, this is all your fault. My daughter would be here if it wasn't for you. Her finger was probably about this close to my face. She was coming forward like that, and she was spewing it out like venom. It was very shocking. It affected me very badly. I know I self-medicated a lot. I started drinking a lot. I, um, I was a wreck. 